Hi guys, so today we are uh, talking about our VEX V5 gears and sprockets. I've broken this presentation up into a couple of smaller presentations in order to make it a little easier on you guys because, you know, I know what it's like to have to sit there and listen to me constantly. So, uh, gears. First off, we have spur gears. The teeth mesh together. That means that they have to touch each other and they transfer motion from one axle to another. We have lots of different sizes of gears. To know which size you're looking at, you count the number of teeth on them, which is pretty basic. Um, Let's move this here. There we go. Uh, we do not use the high strength gears a whole ton. They're thicker and they provide added strength. Uh, in intro robotics, we don't use them a ton. In advanced robotics, we do use them more. So on the next page, you're going to find some examples of some gear ratios. That would be here. Move me kind of out of the way. All right, so these are some possible VEX gear ratios. So notice that they're showing the output here as the second gear in all of these gear ratios and the input being the first gear, which is on the right. Uh, so as you can see, going from this small one to a larger one gives you a gear ratio of three. That's going to increase your torque. The idea here is that you just see how the different kinds of gears can be connected. That's all I'm really looking for for you to get out of this slide. So we have other kinds of gears. So first off, we have bevel gears. Uh, these bevel gears are put together to make a 90 degree angle so that one axle is horizontal and one is vertical. That would be what I mean by a 90 degree angle. Uh, we have multiple sizes and colors of bevel gears. We have some of each, whoops, each of these different kinds. So let's start here at the bottom. These are IQ uh, bevel gear boxes. They come in different colors. I think ours are green, if I'm remembering correctly. And they primarily work with the IQ sets, but you can also use them with our um, V5 gear sets. And the reason we have those is because they have a nice box, just like our differential bevel gear box here, where all the gears can fit together inside, making them a little bit more useful. You can snap them all in and hold them together. Um, we also have the small winch boxes, which you can make into a gear box if we don't have any of the plastic ones or the plastic one isn't going to fit. We have small bevel gears and we have large bevel gears. So this kind of giving you an idea of the things that we have available. So now we're going to talk about sprockets and chains for a second. So uh, there we go. Sprockets have deep grooves for the chain to fit into. So as you can see here, this gray, that's the chain. If you see big, wide, fat pieces of chain, those are actually for either conveyor belts or tank tread. So generally we don't use those for chain because they, they're they big and wide and they're much bigger than the space where the sprocket sits, meaning they're not as useful in builds. So we've also got, uh, they transfer motion over very long distances, whereas the gears did shorter distances. Um, Sprockets come in lots of sizes, same as our gears. And each chain link is also a master link, meaning you can use your thumbnails to separate it. Every chain link can be separated from the chain to make an adjustment to the size. So this is what a gear or a uh, chain drive would look like when it's in place. See, the sprocket has these nice rounded grooves on it to hold the chain, and this would be your chain part. So the question here, which is which? The idea is to label sprockets and gears. So let's get to it. So those are all gears. Notice they have the thinner teeth that uh, so they can mesh together. Those would be gears and those would all be sprockets. So that's the basics of our gears and sprockets. Um, for the most part, benefits of each system, and each system does have its own benefits. Um, 
there it goes. So sprockets are super stable with a chain drive. They hold the chain, they go over long distances, but the sprockets themselves do not touch each other. The chain touches both sprockets. So you've got your sprockets and the chain is touching both of them, but they never touch each other. And then you've got your gears. They're also very stable. They go over shorter distances because they do have to touch each other. They don't require as much space to put in. So if you have a very small area, a gear train may work better for you than a uh, chain drive. So uh, the gears also have to touch each other. So that gives you some basics of sprockets and gears.